the one thing I wanted to do is I wanted to help out the community more and do things that were actually more beneficial and can get out in the public more. And one of the reasons I could do that would be an insurance. Thank you so much for listening today. My name is Keegan Henson with Brightby. And today we have the pleasure of speaking with Daniel Duberstein with Duberstein's Insurance Agency in Farmers Insurance in Prosper, Texas. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you doing, sir? Hey, I'm doing good. So Daniel has had a very interesting uh, experience. He, he actually didn't start in insurance. He's actually had over 25 years of experience in the transportation and trucking industries and operations and fleet management. And then he has about five years of plus experience in the insurance industry. Is that correct? That's correct, sir. Fantastic. Well, we look forward to learning a little bit more about you. But first, I want to just hear a little bit more about your products that you offer and what you offer at Farmers Insurance. At Farmers Insurance, uh, they've been around since 1928, so they're a very stable company. Some of the products that I have to offer, um, auto insurance, home insurance, life insurance is really important, business insurance, and then we can also do specialty products, motorcycles, RVs, boats, um, even clear down to uh, golf carts. Great. And you offer Farmers Insurance. Do you offer any other companies as well that are tied with them? There are other companies that are tied with them. Uh, Zurich is the uh, parent company that owns Farmers, but there, there's several other companies that are with them. Uh, Bristol West is um, insurance for the auto on the higher risk. So we have that. And Foremost is the one that does the specialties like motor homes and travel trailers, um, all kinds of sorts. And then we also have our brokerage on the commercial side. So on our commercial side, we can actually outsource if Farmers doesn't want the uh, the company to insure. And then we've got about 20 or 30 companies on the commercial side. Great. So let's let's jump into it, Dan. Tell me a little bit about why you chose insurance. I mean, looking at everything, it looks like you've had over 25 years in a really stable environment, trucking industry, and, and management from what we can see. And why in the world would you change to insurance after that? Well, that's a good question, actually. One of the reasons I had switched to insurance, um, one of the main reasons I was originally from Oklahoma, so I've been in the Dallas, Texas area for 18 years, but I, I just needed a change in life. But one thing I wanted to do is I wanted to help out the community more and do things that were actually more beneficial and, and get out in the public more. And one of the reasons I could do that would be an insurance. So I had looked at different companies that were, you know, there's many, many companies that, to go work for in the insurance industry. But I had noticed that one thing that farmers insurance is one of the ones that, one of the first to go out when there's a major catastrophe. So when, if you ever heard of the May 3rd tornado, 1999, Oh, yes. in Oklahoma, strongest recorded on earth. It was like 320 mile an hour winds. And I saw the way farmers took care of the clients out there. Uh, they had a mobile unit they'd pull up. They'd take care of them, water, food. They'd even write out checks on site in their mobile unit. So that was a company that I fell in love with and realized it would take care of them from beginning to end. Yeah, and going with a reputable company is, is definitely something, a benefit so tell us a little bit about how, how you maintain your reputation with your agency. You know, farmers, having farmers is definitely a great thing to have on your door, but there's also something to be said for the insurance agent. So what are you guys doing in the community and, and how are you uh, being involved there? That's a very good question as well. Um, there's a lot of things I'm doing for the community. I don't even know if we have enough time to list all of them, but a few things is I'm the uh, for Rotary president. So I was just elected in July the 1st. I became the president of the Rotary for the town of Prosper. And we do many things for nonprofit organizations in the town of Prosper. I also am a member of the uh, Prosper Chamber. And then also I do things with the school. So like on the, um, the driver's education classes that the high school has to offer, they have a morning class and an afternoon class. And I actually, once a semester, will go out and talk to all the kids that are getting ready to turn 16 on the things that they can do and, and not do to help, you know, and help their their family and their uh, mom and dad since their insurance is getting ready to go way up. You're you're not driving with them though, are you? Because you would have to purchase double life insurance, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. No, I'm not driving with them at all. What I do is basically it's about a 15, 20 minute PowerPoint presentation that I do in front of the whole class and, and I just basically 
Tom, some things, you know, some important things, but some of the things that, you know, people take for granted. I know a lot of times that we get out there and start driving and then we get distracted and distracted drivers are one of the main problems that are out there. They're even saying right now that people that text and drive can actually be more dangerous than drunk drivers, if you can imagine that. Yeah, I, I can only imagine. So let's talk a little bit more about this community thing. So you're in the, okay. involved in the community and what what else? Can you can you tell us maybe a story that that your agencies had the opportunity to to impact uh, the lives of others? Yeah, I mean, I there's a situation where I had a lady that was one of my clients that had car insurance and renter's insurance with me, and she had called me, and when she had called, she was really upset, and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to mention her name, but I was like, what's going on? She said, well, I was just involved in an accident. And, but the ladies are really, really being mean and and they're like wanting to fight and the police aren't here yet. And I asked where she was at and it just happened to be that I was just a couple of blocks away. So I told her I'll come to the scene. So I actually came to the scene and calmed them down before the police got there. And then the police got there. And so it was just a situation where, you know, I basically realized she was upset. And then there's another situation, another incident, not on this one, but another time where I had a client that called me and she was broke down the side of the road. And it was a it was an area that's really really dangerous over here in the Dallas area where the cars are flying by and she was scared to death and I had called on freeway to our uh, tow service that we had and and then kept her on the phone until the tow truck got there but the tow truck luckily there was one about six minutes away so within six minutes someone came there and helped rescued her but I was on the phone until they got there so she was really really happy about that so that's just a few things that we go above and beyond to try to help out the clients. So would you say that over your 25 years of experience with, with trucking, with, with the trucking industry, would you say that that's helped you in your, in your agency and how you've grown and, and also how you service? Yeah, it definitely can't hurt. I mean, I've seen all walks of life. I've seen, you know, you never take for granted for people. I mean, you never can look at someone and decide, well, that person's rich or that person's poor. So you really don't want to judge a book by its cover. Uh, so I think the one thing is I basically do is I try to help everybody. I mean, everybody's equal. They're all humans and they all need help at times. And I try to educate and ensure them and protect them to my best ability. So do you have any advice for our listeners that maybe are considering a major career change like yours, you know, 25 years of trucking experience and then into the, the insurance industry, uh, but maybe they feel stuck in their, in their complacent. Any advice that you would give to, to people who are looking for a change? Um, yeah, I, I would say one words of advice that I would say would be to basically be, you know, follow your dreams. If you're not happy with what you're doing now, uh, maybe you should, you know, do a different change in career, uh, but always stay positive and motivated and never give up. So what's been your favorite thing about insurance so far, uh, but also the thing that you miss most about uh, the other industries that you've been in? Uh, I think the thing that I, I enjoy the most now is I have more flexibility, and more freedom, and it's not like I'm being watched as far as micromanaged. So that's the part I love about what I'm doing now as an agent. Um, as far as some things that I miss, uh, I was I was in a working environment where I was working around, you know, 20, 30, 40 people. Yeah. Now I'm not working around that many people all the time. So yes. I do miss that. I do miss, you know, there's a lot of friends that I have in the trucking industry. So I miss that, the camaraderie. Yeah, definitely. But I would say you you probably get some of that through the community involvement that you're in. That is true, yes. What are some mistakes you've made and and lessons that you've learned uh, that have transferred over in in owning your own business and and growing your business? I would say, and that's a very good question, but I would say some of the mistakes is I didn't get into insurance sooner. (laughs) <laughs> we're only on this planet so many years in, in our lifetime. I think we uh, also, I think about it jumped in, <laughs> I think about it jumped in the insurance industry sooner. Um, I would definitely be happier, but I'm definitely happy with what I'm doing now. Uh, some of the mistakes are you, you live and learn, but you always you try to fix your mistakes and, and move on. So there's a few things that I did here and there in the beginning on the insurance that uh, didn't help me as much for moving, you know, progressively down the line. But, but now I've got almost 300 clients. Um, I've got a great area in Prosper, Texas, and the community and the whole area is growing. So I'm very happy with what I am right now. You're in a great place because it is Prosper, Texas. So only good things can come from that, right? 
That is correct. <laughs> so why did you choose Prosper? What what made you choose Prosper, Texas? Uh, I saw the growth opportunity. Uh, when I first came here to Prosper, it was a, it's a small town, small feeling, and everybody has a tight-knit community. When I first came over here, there's only about eight or 9,000 people. Now we've got about 22,000, 23,000, wow, and it's going to continue great. to grow. So it's going to be 70, 80,000 by the time it's built out. And you post uh, pretty consistently on Facebook about different insurance topics and uh, offer to help clients better understand. What would you say you do well or do the best when educating your clients? I mean, what would you say you have to educate them most about? Well, there's actually quite a bit to insurance. So if you keep it kind of basic and simple, it makes it easier for people to understand. Um, You can get really complicated on some of this stuff and make it where you lose half your audience. But I don't want to do that. I just want to keep it simple. So on the auto side or the home side, there's so many variables to look at. But insurance is basically risk. So every insurance company takes a risk factor. So you've got to understand those risk factors and try to minimize the risk in the eyes of the insurance company to get a better rate. What would you say the the most commonly misunderstood topics are in insurance? What what do you hear the most of that you think, man, if only everyone would know? (laughs) Um, I think the biggest, biggest misconception is people don't realize how important and critical your credit score is. Um, your critical your credit score, not only on the insurance on the home side, but on the auto side, it's really, really greatly affected. So you've got different categories of risk factors, and your credit score is one of the major contributors that helps decide what risk factor you are. There's only three risk factors anyway. There's preferred risk, which gets the best rates, standard risk, and then non-standard. And so the rates just go way up on non-standard people. Yeah, definitely. So are there any ways that you that you try to help them in understanding that or maybe help them improve uh, their, their credit score for later down the line? Sure, sure. There's several ways you can help improve your credit score uh, for farther down the line. Um, so you've got different ways. You know, if you got credit cards, try to keep those balances, you know, below 20% of what you're using. Uh, pay all your bills on time. Uh, that's a big thing. Even some people, if they have everything paid off, they feel like, well, I don't need any credit cards or anything. I've got all my stuff paid off. Well, actually, your credit score starts dropping if you don't, you know, still use your credit. So you still want to have a little bit of credit out there. I know my mom and dad say basically they've got everything paid off. Right. Well, they go on a cruise about every three months and put stuff on the credit card. That's to help keep their credit score high. And and then they go on a cruise and say, that's that's how we keep our credit high, right? <laughs> That's that. That's it. We'll go charge it, and then we'll come back, and we'll pay it back off a month right. or two later. That's right. Hey, I think I'm going to do that as well. I think I'm going to go on a cruise, put it on a credit card, and say, well, the reason I went on the cruise was because I got to keep that credit going. <laughs> so I think, my, I think it. my wife might go for that as well. <laughs> <laughs> She'll love that. Daniel, we, we really want to to know five key takeaways from you. And this, this can be about insurance. This can be about uh, life in general, about business. If we just ask five different key takeaways, what would you give to our listeners so, so they walk away with, with something great? The five key takeaways, I would say, um, one, the number one thing was your credit score is huge, so keep your credit good. Another thing I would take away is, um, you know, obey the laws, don't get in trouble. And if you have claims, you've got to minimize the claims to so get with your insurance agent before you write a claim up, because once they put a claim up against you, it's marked for five years. Another thing I would say is a lot of people underestimate life insurance. You really, really need to look at life insurance, especially if you're a younger couple and you have some kids. There's there's ways to have, you know, different life insurance policies. They're very affordable, but yet you're protecting your family if something really goes wrong. Another key takeaway is um, life is short, make the best of it. And then the last thing, but very important, is uh, make sure that you you understand your agency as far as the insurance agent that you have and that they understand you and that they're really behind you and protecting you. Daniel, what is the best way, if someone is listening and, and wants to know more about you, wants to get quotes from you, what's the best way to, to reach you? Well, they can reach me in several ways, but the, probably the easiest way is they can call my office, 469-535-7999. Uh, for some of the millennials out there that like to text, if they want, they can text me. And my email, my text is 214-336-0418. Or they can just email me, 
at dduperstein at farmersagent.com. And we want to remind you, if you're looking for insurance quotes that don't sting, go to brightby.com, click get a quote, and type in Dan Duberstein's name. You'll find him right there. We also want to remind you to subscribe to our podcast and also give us a review. Please, that helps us so much. If you guys need anything else, please don't hesitate to give us a chat or give us a call. We'd be more than happy to help you. But until next time, have a wonderful day.